Good afternoon and welcome to the worship service of Victoria Congregational Church on this fifth Sunday of Easter, May the 2nd. This is Communion Sunday, and so get your elements ready when it's time for communion. Uh, we will be taking of the bread. Here we have a loaf of bread and of the cup. And so whatever bread you may have in, in this cup is, is red wine today, blessed. We will bless it later. <clears throat> whatever you have at home, grape juice, wa even water, orange juice, but partake with us. And we will bless the elements together and we will enjoy what God has prepared for us in remembrance. This is also when we will be celebrating Pam Sunday, Pacific Islander and Asian American Ministries uh, in the United Church of Christ. Many uh, celebrated last week, but within because of birthday and many other things, I didn't want this to get lost in the fray. So Pacific Islander and Asian American Ministry, Pam, was organized in 1974 at a gathering in San Francisco, California of representatives from different regions throughout the United States. The vision was to unite and move forward at the national, regional, and local levels as Pacific Islanders and Asian America, Americans in the United Church of Christ, sharing our unique gifts with one another. Pam was voted into existence at the 10th General Synod in 1975 as a recognized special interest group within the UCC. The 17th General Assembly adopted the pronouncement, a United Church of Christ ministry with Pacific Islanders and Asian Americas, call Americans calling to establish an implementation uh, committee to make requests about the ministries of PAM churches. The 18th General Assembly passed a resolution designating the last Sunday of April as PAM Sunday when all UCC churches recognize and celebrate the gifts and contribution of Pacific Islanders and Asian Americans in the life of the UCC. PAM has initiated, sponsored, and supported and participated in many activities at all levels of, comp of the conference, worked for greater PAM representation on all levels of the conference boards, committees, and staff. PAM continues to address institutional racism within the church and society, is concerned with issues of human rights and justice, and helps to support and strengthen clergy and lay leadership at the local level. Let us begin our worship.
worship, let us join in the responsorial call to worship. Remain here. Remain here with me. Remain among these branches. Remain watered in this love. Amen. Let us now continue with this beginning of worship in the singing together of joyful, joyful, we adore you.
Today, as we join in with our statement of faith, we at the here at Victoria, at least, uh, use different creeds each Sunday, different statements of faith. And so this Sunday, uh, the Apostles' Creed, an alternate version, will be the creed. Join along as we make, as we say this statement of faith together. I believe in God, the Father, Mother, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only child, our sovereign, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, having ascended to the dead, and having risen on the third day, Christ ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of the Father, Mother, and from there will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come to the wonderful time where we pass the peace to one another as we greet each other in the body of Christ. <clears throat> May the peace of Christ be with you. Hug the person beside you. Shake their hand. Hold their hand. Give them a kiss on the cheek. But let that individual that's with you know that you're glad that you are worshiping together. Know that you are glad to be in the presence with one another. And if you are sitting alone, know that you are not alone. You are in God's world, and there are brothers and sisters all over greeting you at the same time. Amen. Our first lesson for the day comes from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the, Can of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shears, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. 
May God's blessing and understanding be added to these words we have heard. Our antiphonal reading of the psalm is from Psalm 22, verses 25 through 31. The response, O God, do not be far away. O God, do not be far away. Let us begin with the response. O God, do not be far away. O God, do not be far away. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to God. For dominion belongs to God. O oh God, do not be far away. O oh God, do not be far away. To God indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Posterity will serve God. And proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn. O oh God, do not be far away. O oh God, do not be far away. As we come to the time for the sharing of joys and concerns, we do remember that God has provided for us. God has given us life. God has given us Jesus as an example and as one to follow. God has given us the Holy Spirit and God has given us one another as companions on this life journey. God has entrusted us with many things, and God still loves us. We are a people made up of many different colors, many differing uh, gifts, many differing traits, and in all of this uniqueness and differences, we come together in unison, knowing that we are God's people, that we do share together, in this uh in this realm of god and so we are grateful and we bring our praises we also bring our concerns for our loved ones and those that are suffering maybe from medical conditions of cancer conditions of heart disease condition of uh, maybe liver or or gallbladder or maybe differing things with the eyes and the ears. We know that people have different ailments. We know that some people have uh, problems with their bones and arthritis. Others, individuals are, are trying to recuperate from injuries. But in all these things, God does care. And God does tell us to come and reason together to make our wishes known and our wants known. God wants us to bring everything before the throne of grace. And so we invite you to bring those voices and we encourage you to bring those voices to God and lift up those names. Our prayers of the people today is, the, is from Pam Sunday. And so we will pray at this time the prayers of the people. Oh God, Good Shepherd, you have journeyed with us even as our ancestors have traveled across the continents and the oceans of this world. You placed us on lush islands. You have made us lie down in green pastures. You have been with us as we walk through the deepest valleys of migration and movement as refugees of war economic necessity and displacement. On this Pam Sunday, we give you thanks and pray for the Pacific Islander and Asian American ministries of our United Church of Christ. 
for 46 years strengthening the voices of the Pacific Islanders and Asian American churches, taking seriously God's call to binding covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. Help us and teach us to practice right relationship based on respect, sovereignty, self-determination, and religious freedom of all indigenous peoples within our church and global community. We pray for the land and the people, for healing and hope, and true reconciliation, ho'okui kahai, which is still to come. Help us to welcome everyone to your table, that goodness and mercy might follow us all the days of our lives. For such a time as this global pandemic, we give thanks to four people who have ceased referring to it as Chinese virus. We give you praise for voices that actively work against racism and violence. We pray also for your guidance and compassion for those who hold on to misinformation against and point fingers at their neighbors. Give us all courage in the struggle for justice and peace as we welcome the stranger into conversation along our mutual journey. God of resurrection, hope, as the world begins to emerge from the tomb of fear and isolation, we look to you. We pray for the millions of people who have lost their lives in the global pandemic. We embrace their families as well. We pray for all who suffer in body and spirit. Walk with them through each dark valley. Feed them with mercy. Anoint them with healing. We trust you. We trust that you are greater than any virus, continuing to bring lives together even when we are apart from one another. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you, O God, as we offer all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. Amen. Our epistle lesson today is taken from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. For no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we have, may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out our fear, for fear has to do with punishment, 
and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love you, and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. May God's blessing and wisdom be added to these words. We come to our time where we read our gospel lesson. So for those who are able, out of respect, let us please stand for the gospel lesson. Today's Gospel is John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the world that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in today's gospel lesson, we hear Jesus talking about the vine and the branches. And I always, as the picture shows, I always think of a grapevine. Uh, and that's automatically. But I think we could think of different vines and, and other things. But I believe that even probably in Jesus' day, they were thinking about grapevines. Uh, and the thing about grapevines is it's kind of like tomato vines. You can get these shoots and branches that'll do nothing but zap, zap all the energy from that main, that main uh, branch uh, of the vine. And so the, they just go wild and all over the place, but there's nothing on them. It's surprising if you go to a, a, a vineyard and you see these wine vineyards, you, you might think, oh, they're gonna have these great, this great big arbor and the, and the grapes are gonna shade you over and everything else. But if you look at those vineyards, you understand the horticulturalists and all those that take care of those vines are trimming them back to make sure that the fruit is going to be produced. So they don't want anything coming to take away the nourishment from the fruit to take away so that it may look pretty to have all these nice green vines, but it sure doesn't give you what you really need, that sustenance, that, that grape that tastes so good to us. And so Jesus uses this illustration today, he's like, I am the vine and you're the branches. And what is our purpose but to bear fruit? And so the fruit of which we bear would be other people that have decided to make this commitment to make the journey and to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, this journey that we call to heaven. Now, we can make these decisions in different ways. And some people say, well, I do it my own way. Well, there might be little hints along the way but, you know, it, there's still only one way to see the great example and to know how to follow to God, and that is through Jesus Christ. Because we understand that even through the words of the gospel and through 
uh, the writers of the epistles that no one goes to God except through Jesus Christ. Now, we, we can take that to an ultimate extreme and say this is what we have to do and everything else. But I believe what, what is being talked about here is following God to the point of it's not the letter of the law, it is the intention of the law which is hard for us to get to at times. So the letter of the law says, you don't have to take care of, the, uh, of those foreigners in a certain way. The only thing that you have to do to take care of somebody that's not part of you is when you go out to your field, you just don't take all of the food from the field. You leave a, a part of the gleaning for somebody that might need help. Uh, and, and so you can say, I never really had to interact with those individuals. I put it at the edge of the city, at the edge of the garden, and I don't have to do anything else. Well, I think God calls us more, more than that. God was calling us out to me in, in that sense of, of sharing with others, calling us out of our selfishness, calling us into being part of this vine and bearing fruit in the sense what we have been given, what God has given to us, we share with others. So we share food, we share water, we share sustenance, and we share the good news that because Jesus lives, we too can live. Because Jesus was able to fulfill the law in the sense of Jesus has made the journey from birth to death to life again. We have been shown a way that in what we think is impossible at times to be able to go to heaven. And so we share this good news that because Jesus lives, we too can live. And this is the fruit that, that we bear. Uh, and, and in order to get to that fruit, just as a vine would need water and fertilizer, we sometimes, to get to that point of bearing fruit and bringing others, people into the kingdom, the fertilizer and other things may be that we have to feed that person so that they can hear beyond the grumblings of their stomach. Maybe we have to sit down and listen to that other person so that they can hear us beyond the grief that is overwhelming them at the loss of a loved one or a loss of their home or their livelihood that somebody may have had for all these years. So we have to take into account that we have to nourish and feed along the way. Uh, I'm reminded uh, when I took a mission class and they were talking about being on the mission field, this registered nurse was talking to us about how to help families so that their children can survive in third world countries. And she was talking specifically in this context about how do we help people, uh, especially women, when they have a newborn child to keep that child safe and nourished. Because one of the facts that is known is in a third world country, uh, dehydration is one of the leading cause of deaths for infants. And so we were taught, you know, there was a mixture of salt and sugar and water. Uh, we would just go buy Gatorade or Pedialyte to help these individuals, you know, if they have dysentery or these children. But there, is a, there was a process that we were told saying, if you're going to a village for the first time and, and this nurse had been in Africa for several years, which uh, some of the parts of Africa are different now, but as she was in Africa, she said the hardest thing she had to do was watch a baby die because the family did not trust an outsider. And so she could say whatever she wanted and say this is what I would suggest, but they still wouldn't listen to her. But after that first child died, the story went on, to, she said, I grieved with them, I walked with them, and I grew with them. And so when the next child in the village was born, and the same problem came of the dysentery and dehydration, they came to me and said, 
Let's try your way. This is what I'm talking about, helping to nourish and feed and fertilize along the way. We have to meet people where they are, and we have to meet their problems. It, or else we're just doing like everybody in, in the scripture as Jesus was talking about, their people, the Pharisees would say, oh, okay, be well and be fed, and then go off and not help. And so we are called to be this kind of, of Christian. We are called to be part of this vine and to bear fruit. And, and what I find interesting as someone not born of the Jewish religion, someone who was not born naturally in, with a Jewish bloodline in the sense of, of saying, I can go to Israel and claim that I'm Jewish. I find it interesting, as the Apostle Paul says, I'm part of that engrafted vine. That uh, when, when you're doing uh, growing vineyards, you can engraft different branches into a tree, but you still have to nourish it in other things. But we also know to engraft the vine, it's painful for the main root too, because that main root has to adjust to feed the vine, to feed that engrafted branch. And so you, to engraft a branch, whether it's a tree or a vine, you have to cut into the bark. You have to cut in and you make a wound in the plant. And then you take your part, and, and for me, I would say I'm already, I was already wounded as an individual. I, 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 and so they, I'm infused into a vine that's very healthy and becomes wounded for me, and me wounded already. That, that vine then provides me nourishment and strength, and all of a sudden is saying, okay, you're part of us now. You must be with us. You are with us. And so it's not like somebody say, okay, now earn your keep. It's like saying, no, you're part of us. You're part of the vine. Let's keep our family going. Let's keep this vine going. And that may mean along the way it's painful that we have to have those injuries again of pruning, but also we can engraft other people. Together we are strong. So the more branches that are healthy, the better chance that the main vine has to sustain everything else because those other branches are taking care of other people or other fruit. And so we, we are very much like that. And Jesus calls us to be a branch on that vine. And we are those branches. Let us go out and feed the world. And let us go out and engraft other branches with us so that all of God's children or all of God's branches may be together. And may we make that journey to heaven or no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome in the vine. Amen and amen. Today we are invited to become deeply attached, close and loyal as branches who are connected with Jesus Christ our vine. In other words, we are to bear fruit with a spirit of love by helping each other, reaching out to each other, and encouraging each other in our daily pilgrimage. As it is written in the Wisdom Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 9 through 10, that two are better than one, because if they fall, one will lift up the other. But for the one who is alone and falls, there is not another to lift that person up. So let our offering lift up one another in God's love that abides in times of sadness, loss, and grief. Let our offering lift up one another in God's love that abides in times of hopelessness, brokenness, and failure. Let our offering be a thanksgiving of God's love that abides within us times of hopefulness, 
forgiveness, unity, and peace. And let us accept God's invitation to be ever-present in times of deep de despair and in times of great joy. Now let us offer ourselves in gratitude and with generosity as fruits representing the abiding goodness of God. might know that we love them as much as we love you. Amen. Take together. 
When they needed to hear it, Christ told his friends, I am the vine. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are part of this vine. Come to taste and see. Come to find yourself among the branches. Come to this table to grow again. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks for the peace of God. We thank you, O God. You remain here with us. You have always been here with us. We rejoice that you have stayed. You have called us your life. You have encouraged us to grow. You've put us in the right soil. You've shown your light more brightly upon us. You've fertilized us with your love, whether your people noticed or not. You cultivated your people. You remained hopeful. You remained expectant. You encouraged us as much as you coaxed the vines of this fruit from the earth. You radiated the sun upon this wheat. You shone upon the bakers. You loved the harvesters. You remained present in each moment until this time when we could partake of these gifts, knowing that you remain in these elements. Transform us, O God, as you transform this bread and this cup so that we might all grow in your abiding love. The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? The fruit of the vine that we drink, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us partake and share. This is the body of our Lord given for us. This is the cup of the Lord given for us. Let us join in the prayer of thanksgiving, followed by the prayer of our Savior. Remain with us, O God, make this feast the nourishment we need to grow more wild and wonderful. Graft us onto the vine of your beloved so that we might grow more connected with you and all creation. With this food and this drink, let us be the love that we have found in you and your beloved as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
receive the benediction. Remain with us, O God. Grow with us, O God. Go with us, O God. Love us always, O God. Be filled with the Holy Spirit as witness to divine love. Amen and Amen. <laughs>